Here we're tackling topics 8.8, uh, 8.9, 8 .8, 8 and 8.10. So pretty much we are talking about buffers. And buffers are a solution that will resist the change in pH, meaning that you could add some acid to it. It's not going to decrease too much. You can add the base to it. It's not going to increase too much. It's going to stay pretty much around the same um, pH. And this is really important, especially when it comes to our blood. Our blood has natural buffers in them. And in case our pH gets too high or too low, it won't get too acidic or too basic. Um, so those buffers play a really important role in regulating homeostasis um, or just regulating things within our own body for those pH ranges. All right, cool. So here, we're going to talk about acetic acid. It forms a buffer with its conjugate base, the acetate ion. So essentially, you're going to have um, a weak acid with its conjugate base. That's what forms a buffer. So we get a weak acid with its conjugate base. Um, so here we're going to write the equation for the buffer system containing acetic acid and the acetate ion. So we're going to show that we have HC2H3O2. So again, that's the acetic acid that I have right here. And we're going to add some water to it. We're going to have it in the presence of water. Remember, all of these are aqueous solutions. Um, and so they will always have water somewhere around. And we're going to look at its conjugate base, which is the acetate ion, or C2H3O2 minus. And there is a little minus sign in there. It's just hiding this. All right, cool. So if this is going to be an acid, it's going to donate an H plus to our water, giving us C2H3O2 minus. So this now becomes a minus because this is a positive one. And we end up with H3O+, plus, which again is an acid. So again, we have a weak acid and its conjugate base in this buffering system. So for B, we're going to calculate the pH if we've, if we've added, sorry, if we have 100 mils of our acetic acid and um, 100 mils of 0 0.100 molar of our acetate ion. And it gives us our Ka in here. So um, looking at this, it looks like a rice table. And we will go ahead and get the reaction in here. We have, and you might want to kind of squish your page a little bit. It's, um, we have some things to do on the other side of this rice table. C2H3O2 minus plus H3O plus. Cool. Draw a vertical line and right there. We'll note that because water is a liquid, we don't do anything with that for the rice table. So here we have 100 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar. Remember, in here, um, in the rice table, there's only moles and pressure. Since this is a solution, we're dealing with moles. So we have 0 0.100 liters times 0 0.1 molarity. And just to remind you for this, molarity is moles per liter. So if 0 0.100 moles, for every one liter. So I have to convert this over to liters and do 0 0.100 liters. Those two liters cancel, and that's where I get the moles at the end. And that should be canceled out, not kind of looked like Kelvin. So that's where I'm getting this number from. So here we've got zero point, when I multiply the two, we get 0 0.0100. We have this for our acid. Plus, we have that same moles for our conjugate base. Then we're going to subtract out some acid. We're going to add some acid over to each of these. Note that we're not starting off with this H3O+. Plus. It's just going to start off at zero in the system. This told us that we had each um, this much of acetic acid and the acetate ion. That's why I put this right over here. So to do your at equilibrium, We'll just finish that part off. Hopefully this becomes second nature to you since you've done so many of these. All right, so I'm going to show, um, I'm going to kind of scoot some stuff over here. I'm going to show my equilibrium expression. Please do not forget to do this. You could essentially get a point just for doing this equilibrium expression. And it's wonderful to get some easy points. And then over H... C2H3O2. Don't forget that because um, 
water is liquid, it does not go in here. So then I can put this in. I have my 0 0.0100 plus A times A over 0 0.0100 minus A. And because I do not want to do the quadratic equation, we're going to say assume A is negligible. And I'll point to the A for the acetate ion and the A for the acetic um, acid ion. I'm not doing for the H3O plus. I'm going to keep that A because we definitely need to have some unknown variable in here. All right, my Ka from over here was 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Then I have 0 0.0100. This one's negligible, but I'm multiplying it by this A over 0 0.0100. There is no more A to be had here. Those cancel. So A is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So that's what we would put in right into here. We want to find the pH, though. So the pH is equal to the negative log of the H3O plus concentration. So we've got negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And to remind you how to do this, negative log 1.8, E button, negative 5. And this gives us 4.7. Now, I'm just going to go through like a lot more sig figs here than I normally would just to show you like how slight of a change some of these things might be. So I'm going to do like 4.7, 4, 5. Again, way more sig figs than we need, but I just want to make sure you see what that looks like. So that's my pH for this first solution, my buffer solution. Now we're going to play around with it. Let's see if it actually works out when we add NaOH to this. So this next one, I'm writing the equation if NaOH was added. So NaOH, we're going to think about what's reacting with that. Is it going to be our weak acid or is it going to be our conjugate base? So recall that NaOH, the Na is a spectator ion, making that OH negative. So that's probably going to react with our um, weak acid. So I'll write out that equation, HC2H3O2 plus OH minus, and looking at what that produces, well, that H from the weak acid is going to go to that OH minus, producing our acetate ion and water. So now I have I'm calculating the pH if 20 milliliters of 0 0.0010 molar NaOH was added to here, assuming no change in volume. Because I'm doing something that has a change to it, I'm actually going to use the BCA tables. So the before, the change, the after. Go ahead and make sure you have the reaction right above there. So I'm going to do this one. HC2H3O2 plus OH minus, oh, this is an equilibrium. Sorry, my bad. Uh, C2H3O2 minus and water. Draw those vertical lines. Um, water isn't going to do anything because it's liquid, but it's just gonna hang out there. So I'm going to assume that I had the original amount here. So I had 0 0.0100 of my acid and of my acetate. So we're going to um, put in 20 mils of 0 0.0010 molar. So when we do that, we know we have 0 0.02 times 0 0.001. That gives us two to the fifth. So 2.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, so because I'm going to, for the change, subtract out the smallest amount in my reactant. So my smallest amount is this 2.0. So I'm going to do minus 2.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. Subtract them out from each of these things over here on the left-hand side. And adding it over here on the right-hand side. 
So when I subtract out these two, right now one minus um, one minus two negative fifth. Don't forget that e button. So I've got zero point zero zero nine nine eight. This is zero. And then I'm going to add the two, so 0 0.01002. I'm going to do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Cool. Um, so now we have to calculate the pH. Well, I know I can use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. I know that the pH is equal to um, the pK plus the log of the conjugate base over its acid. So I have the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the conjugate base over the weak acid. So my pK, I don't have a pK, but I do have a Ka. And I can recall that to get from Ka to pKa, it's the negative log of the Ka. So negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, plus the log of See a minus so zero point zero one zero zero two over my H A zero point zero zero nine nine eight and then let's throw that into our calculator. We have the negative log of one point eight to the times ten to the negative fifth plus the log of point zero one zero zero two divided by point zero zero nine nine eight. So I told you that there was going to be a very, very slight change, and that's why I went to so many sig figs in the question before. But now I have 4.746. So notice. Um, and we do need pH here. This is the 4.7 time, uh, 4.745 is the pH just of the acid in this conjugate base. When I add, and granted, it's a small amount of moles of base, but I'm adding in just a little bit, my pH increased so ever so slightly. Um, and I could add more and more and make a more dramatic number if I need to, but that pH isn't going to change all too much. For E, now I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to add an acid to this. So I'm going to think about which one of these two, the acid or its conjugate base, is going to react with an acid and so for this one, the conjugate base is going to react with an acid. So I'm going to start off with that. I have C2H3O2 minus, plus I know I'm going to have HCl. The Cl is a spectator ion, so I'm just dealing with H plus. And this just gets attached right there. So I have HC2H3O2. And then I am now figuring out what that is going to be. If I add in, let's make that milliliters. That'd be fun to play with liters. Maybe I'll try that a little bit later on. Um, and we can see what this would look like. So again, I'm going to throw this into a BCA table. If C2H3O2 minus plus H plus. CH2H3O2. Um, I'm still going to start off with that same initial amount of the conjugate acid, sorry, the conjugate base and its weak acid. This time I'm going to have 0 0.020 liters times this. So I think that was the same one as before. So I'll do 2.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. And we're going to subtract out 2.0 times 10 to the negative fifth because that is the tinier number. I'm going to add it over to this side. This one should have been 0 0.01002. That's nothing. And then this is 0. Point... JK. My bad. Sorry. 0 0.00998. This one is 0 0.01002. Oh, I forgot I was adding for here. All right, same thing with our Henderson Hasselbalch equation. pH is equal to pKa less the log of the oopsies, the concentration of your 
conjugate base over the concentration of your acid. My pKa, I don't have that from before. Um, I have the Ka, and I'm just going to put that in here. The negative log of the 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, which was my Ka from the previous uh, side, plus the log of, okay, my A minus is 0 0.00998 over 0 0.01002. We'll throw this into our calculator. And actually, I'm just going to cheat. And I'm going to just do this. Sorry. 998-1002. So we have 4.743 for our pH when we add just a teeny tiny bit of acid. And granted, it's a tiny amount. Um, but even with more a larger amount, you can see that it would become more acidic. All right, um, so with these, make sure you know that if you're adding an acid to something um, or a base, you know which species it's going to react with. So the acid is going to react with the conjugate base. If you add a base, like a strong base to this solution, it's going to react with your um, weak acid. And then just play around with some BCA tables and throw it into the Henderson-Hasselbeck equation. All right, hope this was helpful. Take care, bye.